Hi there, it's Jan here and in today's session of my Tennis Fit podcast I'm going to talk about the dedication. So, basically, what is this all about? The dedication. At the moment, it's a winter season, basically, and I'm here in Italy and I'm uh, preparing myself for upcoming season. The upcoming season it starts around uh, March or April next year for me where I'm aiming to enter some, some good level tournaments, some nationals and some ITFs. And uh, basically, the winter, I'm going to be spending working a lot on my fitness. Because this is a huge part of, of my game, obviously, and I need, to, I need to make sure that I can keep up running with those young boys on the court. But uh, anyway, for, for you, what you're going to take out from this, uh, from this episode, from this session, is I'm gonna talk a little bit more about dedication because it's really important uh, to have that kind of you know you need to have that burning desire I have that burning desire to keep working on my game to keep improving for whatever reason it is it's just driving me I wake up in the morning and I want to work out I want to train uh, I want to improve myself and I'm dedicated I'm dedicated because I decided to really push myself and to see how far I can go you know even at at the later stage of my you know my tennis life basically you know, I'm not 10 years ago, I was much younger, maybe I was a little bit more flexible, but, uh, but because I've been really training hard uh, recently, I'm physically, I'm physically in much better shape than before, and this allows me to play with younger players. Past summer I played uh, in Czech Republic in, uh, in some tournaments with some really good players and I beat some, then I lost to some, but, but there were some really close matches and these guys training four hours a day, so, which I was not. And, uh, and I'm still not training so much, as much as I would love to, you know, to be honest, because I'm really busy and uh, I've got a lot of coaching and uh, so I try to combine both things, but it's not easy. But uh, what I want to say is uh, you need to be really, if you want to really improve, you have to be very dedicated and it's what is really important is to write down your plan on how you're going to do this. Yeah? So it's really important to have a plan. So what I recommend you to do right now, if you're not doing this yet, and it doesn't matter if you are an adult club tennis player or a junior or you know or just amateur or just enjoying tennis but if you if you really want to improve you really want to step up your game this is super important you take a piece of paper or you take your iPhone with the notes and you write down your training plan you need to write down it doesn't have to be necessary training plan but you need to write down a plan on how you going to get to where you want to get to this is super important so what I want you to do right now, you write down a step one. Step one, you're gonna write down what is my biggest struggle at the moment. What do you struggle most with when you play a match? Not in a training, when you play a match, what do you really struggle with? What is why are you losing your matches? Write this down. Write this down, the first thing that comes to your head. Why am I losing the matches? Why I lost the last 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 match against the guy or why I lost the last five matches? What was the number one biggest problem for me? What was the number one biggest struggle? For example, for me, the last match I lost uh, three months ago, two months ago, before going against South South Europe uh, to prepare for the, for, the, for the training season now. Basically, I lost to the guy because I was uh, not as good physically as he was. I was a little bit slower. He was just faster. He was faster on the ball. He was moving me around. Uh, he was a little bit more precise, but I could not get in the right position. I was a bit slower. So, again, I've written it down and I say, okay, I'm going to be working all winter on this. Getting fast in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the position, recovery, stronger legs, faster legs, more flexible legs. Yeah, so this was the number one point me. And, and still, I'm working on this until I'm going to take it to the next level. And, uh, you know, as long as I'm not happy with it, I'm going to keep working on this. This is the point number one. So. What is the number one struggle for you? It could be anything. It could be your serve, could be your forehand, could be your fitness, could be your mindset, could be whatever. Write it down, okay? Because this is what you're going to be focusing on for the next two to three months, basically. Yeah? If you have a, also like, if you are also like me at the beginning of the winter season right now, fantastic. Because the winter season, this is the best preparation season. <laughs> this, is the, this is the best part of the year for me. This is what's going to be uh, uh, dec decisive for you next year in the matches how much you're gonna work on your game for the next two three months if you have a, if you're in the beginning of the winter season like me i'm here in the middle of november basically if not if you are the other side of the world australia or you know this kind of this kind of countries then you have a summer doesn't matter you can listen to this podcast in the winter also but uh so we have a we have a step one the step two 
is you're gonna write down how you're going to get, how you're going to fix that, how you're going to overcome that struggle, basically, yeah? So again, give you an example. If it's your forehand, you're gonna write down why my forehand is the biggest struggle, what am I doing wrong there? Some, sometimes when we ask ourselves, we actually know the answer, yeah? A couple of years ago when I was, uh, when I was competing a lot for nationals and stuff, I was I always knew what was not working. I was sometimes was backhand, sometimes was a little bit of surf. So then I kept kept working on this. But then you have to break down that 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 stroke or that or that part of the game that you struggled most with. So let's say in my case now I know it's the fitness and I know it's the legs. Yeah. So I write down. Okay, how I'm gonna do that? So I have to start working on my legs a lot. What I'm gonna do? Now you're gonna write down this according to how much time you have and uh, yeah your availability basically. So you're gonna write down, for example, three times a week for one and a half an hour a day, I'm going to work on that number one struggle in your game, okay? This is super important. So it's really important to write it down. And if you can, you also write down a specific time of the day when you know that you have 100%, that you have 100% availability to be able to train, to focus on that on that part of your game that needs to be improved. This is crucial, yeah? I always remember <laughs> Ivan Landl, maestro. <laughs> uh, I always remember when he was saying, when I used to, when he, he was saying when he used to work with Andy Murray, he was, uh, he was just working with Andy on two to three things, max, for next two to three months. And until these things were fixed, they did not do anything else. They were just working on those things yeah? until they really improved. And so it's, it's really important to break things down, to be very specific and to focus on just that part of your game right now for next two, three months. If you have more problems in your game, you can also do, but I do not recommend to focus on more than three things. Yeah, I think three is kind of the max. Ideally one, two, yeah. So maybe it's a fitness, maybe it's a surf, you work, you work on these two. Fitness or, or forehand, maybe sh maybe you're struggling with short balls, maybe you're struggling with slice, maybe your double hander is not there, you, 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 you know, you're always in defensive position. So, write down two, let's say two, maximum three, but I do not recommend, three is already a law. If you have only two or three months to work on this, three things is a bit too much. If it's one thing, fantastic. You just spend time on that and um, I guarantee you in two, three months, your tennis is gonna be at a different level if you really, really put in the hard work and dedication and the, the time into it, yeah? So we have then step one, which is, what is my number one biggest struggle of my game? Number two, you're breaking, you're breaking things down. So if it's your forehand, why am I missing that forehand? Okay, so then, you're gonna answer yourself normally. Sometimes we know, let's say, oh, I'm hitting ball late. Okay, so I'm hitting ball late. Maybe I'm getting late in the position. So I have to work on the position, get early in the position. So for example, you write down, I need to get earlier in the position. I need to be faster. So then it's again down to your legs, yeah? So you're basically going step by step to the root problem, to that initial root problem. And we're not trying to, the, the idea here is you're not trying to fix what is not working basically, but you're trying to fix why is it not working, yeah? Because again, loads of coaches, uh, uh, every time I go to some tennis clubs and stuff, not every time, but you know, lo lo uh, very often I go to a tennis club and, uh, and the coach is working with a player on the late contact point and, uh, and he's just saying to the player, hit it more in front, hit it more in front. And the player is trying to hit it more in front, but the problem is not to hit it more in front. The problem is that the player is not able to get in that position on time, in time, to be able to hit it in front. So the coach is focusing on, is focusing on, on he's not focusing on the root of the problem. He's focusing on the result of the problem. Do you see what I mean? So you need to, you need to find out what is the root of your problem. And once you analyze it, once you find out that root of the problem, only then you can improve because then you take in the action towards to fix that root of the problem. So if it's, yeah, let's say just as an example, so if we're having that late contact point, I guarantee you, the 90% of cases is the late position or late preparation. And that goes down to fitness, that goes down to leg, leg strength, okay? reaction also, reading the ball of your opponent. So you write down these things and you really need to go down, okay, what is that problem? Why am I missing that? And then you keep working on that. And then, then only then you can start the training process. Yeah? 
but it's really important to know what you need to work on first. Because if you don't analyze it properly, you might be spending next two, three months working on something that doesn't have to be fixed. And then it's gonna be the same result in the matches. Oh, I'm still hitting ball late. I don't have enough top spin on why, 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 why? Find out why and then start working towards that why. This is the point of this session, yeah? I do exactly the same on my game, with myself. So I just want you to learn from that. I'll learn it hard way. I'm still learning hard way, because this is the best way. The best way is to learn hard way, yeah? <laughs> So that everybody's gonna try to give you quick fixes and all this, that this just doesn't work. You have to go through, you have to dig down and you have to find the root of the problem. So we're having this plan, you're gonna write down these steps. So then we have one, two, and then the first step is, okay, taking action. So in the third step, you're gonna write down, let's say now we know that is delayed positioning, okay? So it's the forehand, just the example again. So the number one is the forehand, number two is the late contact point. The root of the problem is the late positioning. Basically, I'm getting late in a position. I'm, having, I'm, I'm not reading ball enough. I'm having a late a reaction, late preparation, and my legs are not strong enough to get in the right position and I'm not able to, let's say, uh, get there on time, okay? So you write these things down. And then number three is how we're gonna get there. So now we're gonna write down three exercises that are going to help you to get there, okay? The number three exercises. One of them, in this case, would be fitness. Strengthening your legs. Doing a lot of running. Doing a lot of reaction drills. Yeah? Throwing the ball, tennis ball, against the walls. Practicing the, the reaction. The ball bounces off the wall different direction. You move. Fast sprints. Yeah? So you're going to be focusing on the fast acceleration. Fast sprints. Getting early in the position. Reading the ball. You're going to take the ball machine. You're going to put it on the other side of the court. You're going to set it, let's say, 20, uh, 20 to 30 balls each set, each round. Yeah, you're gonna do the random placement from the ball machine, not just one direction, but random placement. And you're gonna be working only on getting in that right position, yeah, in this example, yeah. You're gonna put camera next to you. You can film yourself, you can record yourself, even with mobile these days, it's fantastic. And you're gonna be seeing if you're progressing or not. But you have to spend time working on these things, on the one particular thing. This is how you're going to improve, yeah, by being focused by fixing the exact root of that problem. Only then you can improve, only then you will see results and that's gonna take you and get you where you want to be, yeah? Even if it's, a, if it's to enjoy tennis at a better level or if you want to start winning more matches or if you, if you are a junior on a transition to start playing a men's, men's game, men's tennis, if you want to go to ATP, all is possible. But you have to be very systematic and you have to be very organized and you have to be dedicated, yeah? This plan and the dedication will do it for you. You have these three steps. If you follow these three steps, yeah? First one, what is the number one biggest problem in my game? Number two, why is that, yeah? Three, how I'm gonna fix it, yeah? And then you keep going. Now, once you have these three things written in front of you, you're gonna look at it every day, then you're gonna write down the schedule. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday at three in the morning, going to train one and a half an hour, one hour at least, yeah? If you have more time, fantastic. Just spend time on it. Wednesday, Friday, or whatever. If you can train every day, awesome. If you can train, tw if you can train twice every day, morning and afternoon, what I used to do when I was a kid, juniors, when I used to play uh, performance tennis. Then, of course, your tennis is gonna go to the next level in, in a month, two, max. Yeah, more you train, better you get. But again, it's important to train and to work on the things that need to be improved, that, y that you are lacking it. Yeah, that you are lacking at. If, if you're not good in these things, you have to fix them. Because your opponent will always find out, ah, oh, he's got a weak backhand, oh, he's got a weak forehand. If his serve is not so good, I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna attack him. So we want to, we, we don't want to give, we don't want to be too readable in the matches to our opponents, yeah? You want to be a solid player from every single shot and you need to be able to hit great ground strokes from every single position around the court. And, to place them anywhere you like. Then you have to be super fit and you have to be mentally super strong. Once you have all these things, the sky is the limit. Okay, this is where Federer, Nadal, Djokovic and all these guys are for the past 15 years or so. <laughs> and uh, this is why it's, it's just so exciting to still see these guys beating the youngsters because these guys, they understand the dedication, determination, hard work and a, and a systematic workout. This is what it's all about. It's not about talent. It's about combination of talent, hard work, dedication, yeah? desire, motivation. Yeah? If you want to improve, it has to come from within you, from inside of you. Yeah? Do it for yourself. You don't do this for anybody else. You do this for yourself. 
I do this for myself. I don't want to be 65, 70 years old and tell, se, telling myself, oh, back then I should have worked a bit harder. I wanted to see how, how far I can get, how, how good I can play. For me, it's all about seeing how good I can play, how far I can get to, what level I can, I can play, which players I can compete against. This is for me, this for, for me, it's, 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 it's a challenge for me. And it's a great feeling when I can say, okay, I can still play, you know, at 35 years old almost. I can still play these guys who are 17, 18, 19, 20, and I'm giving them a good go, you know, good run for the money. This is fantastic. And I still want to play also doubles. <laughs> That's another thing. So, but we talk about it next time. Okay, so you write these three things down. You, you, you check your schedule. You write everything in a timetable, yeah? And you're working on these things for next two, three months. When you start feeling different, you keep going. Yeah, until it's there. When it's fixed, when you feel okay, I got it now, then you have some matches, you test it out. If you're really playing better, you know, you, you go out with your sparring partner, with your, with your match partner, and you tell him, look, can you see if, I, if I've really improved? I've been working on this for the past two months or so. You know, let me know, oh yeah, yeah, well done, James, you really improved. Yeah. Or, or, or he will tell you, oh, it's still the same, you still have to work, you know. Yeah, it's it's very obvious when you play a match or training match, and we, we you know ask ask your partner to just tell you how how did you feel? Did you feel I played better? Or if you beat him suddenly, and if you were losing to him for the past months, and suddenly you beat him, then you know that uh, something is working right now. But uh, yes, it's uh, it's a it's a journey, but it's very important this this kind of dedication, and we have to really break things down and uh, and uh, and to focus and really go according uh, by, by the plan basically. And yeah, so this is it for today. Uh, I hope you took away some, some valuable points. Uh, make sure you start working on your game like this. Very specifically, break things down. If you need some motivation, always. We can also talk about the, the motivation in the, in the next episodes, of course. It's a, it's a big part of our game. And, uh, but it's important to really, really stay focused and be dedicated. So let's dedicate uh, to become the best version of ourselves, to become, you know, at least in, in tennis, you want to you want to see how far you can go, how how well you can play, because you don't want to be uh, 65, 70 years old one day and, and uh, regretting that you haven't tried back then. Yeah, uh, how far you could go, and this is for me the point. You know, every year I'm getting a bit older, I'm feeling like oh, still have to, I want to keep going as long as I can run, as long as I can I can enjoy this sport. Uh, this is this is the main point to, to try to play against better players. But the only way how to play against better players is to is to is to keep constantly improving or, or you know working on our game and that's that's the way how we can achieve that that goal so thanks for listening have a great day if you like this podcast make sure also follow me and i'm looking forward to to see you next podcast for more have a great day speak to you soon